So let's understand what is mesh architecture that we are going to implement with the help of BioRTC. In our application, the first thing we need is if two users want to connect with each other, then they should be able to exchange audio, video and data between them. And that is exactly what BevRTC is going to allow us to do. So as you can see here, BevRTC, if you understand it in simplest terms, it is going to allow us to have direct connection between two users. And when that direct connection is established, we will be able to send or you can say exchange audio, video and other kinds of data between these two users. Now, let's come to the topic of group call because that is exactly what we want to implement in our application. And what happens in a group call? Let's say we have a room, okay? By room, you can just imagine like a physical room, okay? And if one user comes into that room, then we add another, then we add another, okay? And this in this manner, we keep adding users, okay, to that room. Then this will be a multi-party call, okay? So we call it multi-party call. When there is a multi-party call, then there will be slight complexity. So here I have written that the rules of the game are going to change. That means it's going to be a little complex, but don't worry. I'm going to explain everything to you in very simplest terms. So let's see what are the different strategies that we have in place for group call. So there are these famous strategies that we can use for implementing group call in our application. The first one is called mesh. Okay. And uh, by mesh, we mean multiple direct connections. That means each user is going to be connected to every other user in the room directly. Then we have multi point control units called MCU in short. Okay. This is a bit more advanced strategy. Okay. And then we have even advanced strategy called SFU, which is selective forwarding units. So these two MCU and SFU are used when we want to create an application for larger number of audience. But in our in our case, we're going to just implement mesh. Okay. Because I'm just going to explain you how you can create an application which can handle up to 10 or 20 persons in a room. Okay. That is the focus of this course. Let's visualize it. Okay. So as you can see, we have, let's say three users, this one, two, and three. And then what happens in a mass architecture, you can see this user one is connected directly to user two and user three. And same is the case for the other two users. And that is what I have written over here that in mass architecture, there are multiple direct connections between every user. Okay. And these we are assuming that they are all in the same room. Okay. Because whenever that communication is going to happen, they will be joined in a common group or you can say common room. Then let's see what happens if there are four users. Then you can see the number of multiple direct connections that just increased. Okay. Earlier, each user was having two direct multiple connections, but now each user is having three multiple direct connections. So you can now imagine what happens in a mesh architecture as the number of users grows, the number of multiple direct connection is also going to grow. And that is why this is going to be very CPU intensive. Okay. And this is not a very scalable solution, but it's a, a better if you learn mesh architecture in the beginning, and then you can learn about the other two architecture MCU and SFU. Now, Let's discuss what are the limitations of mesh architecture. Since we are learning mesh architecture, we should know both pros and cons of this architecture. So as I just explained you, when the number of users is going to increase, then it is going to be very CPU intensive. That means it is going to consume so much bandwidth that at one point our computer or our mobile device is going to break. Okay. It won't be able to handle that kind of processing anymore. So that is why this is not very scalable solution. Okay. And the same thing is mentioned here in the second point that you can actually run this uh, quite easily on your desktop device if it has a higher processing power, but the problem is going to be more visible on low end spec devices. Okay. Like mobile. Okay. Where resources are much more limited. Then let's also discuss these other limitations. Okay. 
So as I just explained, Mesh is actually the easiest way to implement multi-party call. And because all the work is done in your browser, we don't have to manage any server in between. Okay. But the problem is it is only going to work for a small number of users. Okay. So if you want to develop an application which can handle, let's say 20 or more users in a group. Okay. Then it's better if you go with some other architecture okay that i mentioned in the previous slide so the same is explained over here uh, with an example that in a group of five users each browser is going to have four direct connections okay for sending and receiving streams from other peers and by peers you can just imagine peer is the uh, your colleague okay in the same room that you are communicating with so that's it for the mesh architecture i hope i explained it to you if you have any doubts you can ask okay in the community so in the next video we are going to learn more about how to implement webrtc in our application